Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, January 3rd, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, we got a couple of New Year items to start out with. The first one is a leap second that was added at New Year in order to adjust timekeeping for some of the irregularities in Earth's rotation. This is something that has caused issues in the past. A few years ago, I remember some Linux systems crashed because of this leap second. This time, no real widespread outage, but uh, Cloudflare had some issues with its DNS servers. They crashed because some of their round trip time calculations ended up with a negative time. I also myself received uh, one message from one of my servers, basically just complaining about the large time that was skipped so in this case the full second that was all of a sudden skipped did uh, cause that alert to trigger but other than that uh, no big widespread issues that i have heard about And AT&T started turning off its 2G network on New Year's Day. In order to free up more spectrum for data services and the like, AT&T decided to no longer support 2G, which includes edge devices. So at this point, if you don't have a 3G capable phone, then you will no longer be able to use the AT&T network. You should have received a notice from AT&T if you're affected by this. One place where I see this possibly becoming an issue is where you do have, for example, data loggers and such like uh, GPS systems that do use 2G signals in order to report status back. These systems that are often deployed sort of out in the field may no longer function once in that particular area the 2G feature is turned off. This is a gradual rollout, but it is starting as of January 1st. T-Mobile, by the way, is trying to target AT&T customers that are affected by the shutdown and it is promising that it will operate its 2G network until 2020. And a malicious calendar file can be used to shut down or crash iOS on all current devices. In order to exploit this vulnerability, an attacker would have to send an iMessage to a victim with that calendar message as an attachment. Now, this looks just like any other invite. If the victim clicks on the message, then iOS will crash. There's currently no patch for this vulnerability, however, there's a second link you can click on in order to undo the effect of the first. An exploit for this is already available and actually in the show notes, I'll link to a blog article that does list the exploit code as well as a couple of these antidote links that will make your device functional again. There's a little bit of different procedure that you need for the iPad because the iPad cannot receive SMS messages. So you only can send iMessage messages to the device, which of course is crashed and you need a little workaround there with Siri. Well, in the past, I mentioned a few times that developers sometimes leave credentials like AWS keys and the like on GitHub. And that's, of course, exposing these keys. Even if you then later delete them, they may still be left in old versions of the repository. That's kind of the point of Git, usually, that it keeps track and allows you to roll back to these old versions. Well, a little Python script was released now called Trufflehawk. Trufflehawk will search your GitHub repository for anything that looks like an API key or a password. It just looks looks for high entropy strings. So if you do have a GitHub repository, run it against it and uh, see what you can find. It uh, looks pretty simple, the script. Uh, so it's really just a couple lines and it uses the GitHub Python module in order to connect to GitHub. 
Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening. And I have a little challenge for the first couple of weeks here of the new year. I'm bound to say 2016 as a date. If you ever catch me, send me an email and I'll send you a free ISE sticker. Or maybe it doesn't happen too often. I still have a couple of Raspberry Pis around. So just send me an email whenever I do say that the date is actually 2016, not 2000. 2017. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.